to discuss thermodynamics, we need to talk about heat. Heat is basically another means of transferring energy. You've all seen energy transfers if you've had anything over a fire or rub your hands together. Heat is merely this transfer of energy, and it's denoted by the variable Q. The first law of thermodynamics states delta U, or the change in internal energy, equals Q plus W, where W is the work done by or on the system. Q is the heat added to or removed from the system. Now, another way to think of work. This is the work done by the surroundings. Let's break the equation down and talk about U, or the internal energy of a system. We've talked about how gases have a kinetic energy. This U is the total kinetic energy of that system. It's the number of particles times the average kinetic energy. The number of particles meaning the basic particles, either the atoms or molecules. The change in internal energy is related to the change in temperature. Q is the heat added or removed from a system. When heat is added to a system, it is positive. When it is removed, it is negative. For instance, if I have a large metal rod, and on one end I have it over a fire, and on the other end I have it over an ice bath or something. Heat is being added to the system from the fire. Heat is being removed from the metal rod over the ice bath. A cup of coffee left unattended will become cold. This is because the surroundings are colder than the coffee itself. If I want to keep the coffee at a same temperature, I must add heat to compensate for the heat leaving the system. This is because all things try to achieve thermal equilibrium. Let's say that this is my cup of coffee, but in an insulated container. Notice that none of the heat is escaping from the vessel, and my temperature is maintaining 300 Kelvin. Now, if I expose this coffee to the surroundings, the surroundings are colder than the coffee itself. The heat will spontaneously flow from the hot system to the cold system. So when I expose this, notice what happens to the temperature. Imagine this is the energy of the coffee, and it's leaving, warming up the air surrounding it. If I wanted to get my coffee back to the same temperature, I would need to seal it and then add heat back into the system. The heat leaving the system is a negative quantity. The heat being added to the system is a positive quantity. Delta U, or the change in internal en energy of the system, decreases whenever I expose it to the surroundings. Notice my temperature. As temperature goes down, delta U goes down. See how these particles have lower and lower energy. As I increase the temperature by adding heat, my internal energy will increase. We can use the spontaneous flow of heat in heat pumps. So let's say I have a hot reservoir and it's putting into a system heat QH. Then I have a cold reservoir and heat is flowing out of the system QC. Each reservoir has a temperature TH and TC. I can get work out of the system. In order to not violate the first law, QC equals QH minus W out. The second law of thermodynamics deals with entropy of a system. And it gives us this really nice equation for the maximum efficiency of an engine. Entropy never spontaneously decreases. It only remains the same or increases. Because of this, our maximum efficiency is given as 1 minus Tc over Th, the temperature of my cold reservoir over the temperature of my hot reservoir. The actual efficiency of an engine is given to you as the work you get out over the energy you had to put in. You can also define this as QH minus QC over QH. So let's take a look at this heat pump. I have a heat reservoir and that heat pumps in 30 joules of energy into my system. Then I have a cold reservoir which receives a QC of 20 joules. Now I can get work out of this system of 10 joules. Notice that the energy that I put in has to equal the energy that I get out and the work I get out. Now the temperature of my hot reservoir is 600 degrees Kelvin and the temperature of my cold reservoir is 300 Kelvin. The maximum efficiency is given to us as 1 minus Tc over Th. Therefore the maximum efficiency of this heat engine can only be about 50%. 
In order to not violate the second law of thermodynamics, my actual efficiency cannot exceed 50%. Actual efficiency is work out over QH, what I got over what I put in. Doing this, I get 33%. Yay! Let's look at another heat pump with similar hot and cold reservoirs. The temperature of my hot reservoir is 600 Kelvin. QH, or the heat it is putting into a system, is 50 joules. Now, my system is receiving this heat, and then I have a cold reservoir receiving 20 joules of heat because the heat will spontaneously flow from hot to cold. Let's say the temperature of my cold reservoir is 300 Kelvin. The only amount of work I could get out of this would be 30 joules in order to not violate the first law of thermodynamics. I can't get more energy out than what I have put in. 50 has to equal 30 plus 20. The maximum efficiency will be no different than before, 50%. In order to not violate the second law, my actual efficiency cannot exceed 50%. So what I got out over what it cost me. If I take 30 joules and I divide it by 50, I get greater than 50% efficiency. This violates the second law of thermodynamics and therefore is impossible. Anytime you have an efficiency that is greater than what the maximum efficiency can be, this is a big no-no when it comes to heat pumps or heat engines. It violates the second law of thermodynamics and entropy. One way to think about entropy is thinking about breaking to a stop. You have kinetic energy, time passes, you break, and then you have no energy. Your wheels and brakes will be hotter, and therefore entropy has increased. Any conversion of energy to thermal energy is an increase in entropy. Now, this is an irreversible process, meaning you cannot get that energy back. Another way to think about entropy is think about a ball being dropped from a certain height. Potential energy, then kinetic, potential, kinetic, potential, kinetic, potential, and then no energy. That's not entirely true because the ball will be hotter than when you started. But the ball will not cool down and start bouncing up and down. This is an irreversible process. Time only flows one way. Now that is only true for us mere mortals. Superman has just discovered that his heroine Lois Lane is dead from a car accident or something and he decides to take it upon himself to try and get her energy back. No, 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 no. He flies up into space, which we can't just do, and he starts going really, really fast around the Earth. Now, some people think, and make the common misconception, that he just starts turning the Earth backwards. No, 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 no. What he is doing is going so fast, he is actually traveling back in time. Now, doing this, he's going to change the past. See how the rocks are moving backwards to a state of more order. This is violating the second law of thermodynamics. You're going from disorder to order, which isn't going to happen for us mere mortals, but since he's Superman and can do pretty much anything, we'll assume that this is okay.